Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about basic care for Apple's nails. Okay, you see what I did there? Yeah? Okay. The common name is the Apple's nail, but there are different species within Apple's nails in general. I'm talking from experience with the species Pomacia diffusa because that's the species that I actually own and you're probably seeing footage of my Apple's nails as I am talking if the editing went right with this video. There are many many paint jobs for Apple's nails but just to name a few there are shell colors of gold, black, stripe, blue, olive, jade, ivory, striped purple, and many many more. And then the body colors are usually either light or dark with orange or black speckles. Often, Apple's nails are sold under the name Mystery Snail and that is wrong. There's different requirements for different species so I would really recommend you check on like a forum or something what species you actually own. Before you buy an apple snail, you really need to make sure that you have the proper setup for one. So let's just talk a little bit about the tank requirements. Optimal temperatures are between 64 and 84 degrees Fahrenheit. That is when they thrive the best. However, they can withstand lower temperatures than that or higher temperatures than that. But I wouldn't recommend you let them. If you live in a really really cold place or it's winter where you live then I highly recommend a aquarium heater because they do start to die if the temperature is anything below 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The pH of your tank should be anywhere between 7 and 8. However, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I don't actually test my water. I've never had to measure my pH or ammonia or nitrates for my tank. I have a very established tank, but just because that works for me does not mean it's gonna work for you. So yeah, I mean, if you wanna play it safe, then I would suggest you buy a pack of test strips and that you test your water just to make sure that when you bring your snail home, doesn't get water shock. How many snails can you fit in your tank? The general rule of thumb for Apple's nails is for every snail you should have at least five gallons of water. So if you have a 10 gallon tank then it would be good enough for two Apple snails and if you have a 100 gallon tank then that would be good enough for what is 100 divided by 5? 20! Yeah, 20. If you have a 100 gallon tank, you can fit 20 only. However, that's not entirely true because it depends a lot on your filtration and how often you do water changes. So if you have really, really good filtration and you are up to date with your water changes, then you can easily fit like one snail per gallon of water but then again if you have really crappy filtration and you're just lazy as hell and don't really keep up with water changes then I would highly recommend you have less apple snails because interesting enough people buy apple snails because they think of them as cleanup crew for their tank but in reality they're not really much help cleaning up or keeping your tank clean because them themselves produce a lot of waste so they're actually producing more waste than they're actually taking out I'm not gonna lie they're really really good at cleaning up dead bodies so, I mean it sounds okay this sounds really really bad and I don't know how it speaks of me but whenever one of my tank inhabitants dies I don't really bother taking them out because by the time I usually notice them the snails are already like gobbling them down so they are help with eating any dead tank inhabitants 
and they do a pretty good job at eating any uneaten food that your fish may leave behind. But they do starve if you don't provide food for them, so don't just depend them to live off of the waste in your tank or any excess food that your fish might not eat because then that's kind of fucked up because you're starving your snails. You should feed them daily. Okay, let's just move on from this. When you bring your snail home for the first time, you should acclimate them. What I do to acclimate my snails is I put them in a bag and I just kind of float them on the water surface just for the body temperatures to kind of start to match up with the temperature of my water. So then maybe 10 minutes later what I'll do is I'll open up the bag and I'll drip a little bit of the water from my tank into the bag and close it back up and then just kind of float it again for another 10 maybe 20 minutes. And then after that, I'll just usually dump them out. Snails sometimes become inactive from the stress from moving from one habitat to another. But once they kind of get acclimated and get used to their surroundings, they'll become more and more active with time. Let's talk about their diet. Okay, so as far as their diet consists of they are omnivores, meaning they eat both plant and animal matter. In captivity, they prefer wafers, any kind of wafers, turtle pellets, fish pellets, goldfish pellets, any kind of pellet is really good for them and they love it. Some people think that they have a hard time eating floating food, but in reality, they don't. They they just kind of walk up the top of the tank and they put themselves and kind of latch onto the food and then they'll just start to like vacuum it up with their mouth and this probably looks really inappropriate if you have a dirty mind so let me just stop you can also feed them fish flakes or veggies there is four vegetables that i highly 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 recommend they are zucchinis cucumber, spinach, or romaine lettuce. Any of those four things you should provide for them at least once a week. Okay, so what about tank mates? So they're not necessarily picky. Pretty much any tank mate is fine except snail eating species or any really big fish. If your fish can fit your snail in its mouth, it will most likely eat your snail, so no humongous fish and no nippy fish because there's some fish species that like to peck at their testicles and I don't know about you, like I'm not a dude, but if I were a dude, I would not want to get my testicles bitten off all the time. Snails actually have a couple anti-predator adaptations that are pretty cool and it has contributed to them still being around today after millions and millions of years of evolution. Interesting fact, snails actually have both a gill and a lung which allows them to breathe both out of water and inside of the water. That's pretty cool. The gill is at the right side of the body while their lung is at the left side of the body. And they actually have a tube that comes up so that they can breathe water from the water surface without having to come out of the water. In the wild, they would usually use that adaptation to leave the water when the food supply becomes inadequate or to escape a certain predator. Another cool anti-predator adaptation is they actually deposit their eggs above the water line which is handy because it provides protection against aquatic species. However, they would still be pretty vulnerable outside of the waterline. Just saying. What happened to their evolution? <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little bit about their basic reproduction, but I am going to be doing a more detailed video on that soon. But for now, I'm just going to tell you their basic reproduction. So obviously you need both a male and a female, and the female can actually store the male sperm for several months. That's right, 
months. So if you go to the pet store and you bring home a full grown snail and it turns out to be a female, then chances are she has already made it with another male at the pet store and she probably will lay fertile eggs in your tank without having a tank made. So that's pretty cool, huh? Can you imagine that? Like imagine if humans could do that. Mari would have a harder time determining who is and who is not the father. The best way to sex your apple snails is to just kind of wait and the females will obviously lay eggs while the males don't. Some people said that if you take your snail outside of the water and you flip them upside down and kind of wait for them to come out of the shell, that you can actually see their reproductive organs if they are male. Feel free to try it, maybe it'll work for you. You want to keep in mind that females will lay infertile and fertile eggs. Also, I've noticed that my snails are a lot more active in the warmer climates than in colder climates. So around the summertime, they're very active. They're like all over the tent, just, just crawling up the glass and letting themselves fall. And they're just, in general, they're just a lot more active in the warmer weather. And then when the winter comes, they, they pretty much just eat and maybe crawl around a bit and then just kind of sleep. It's normal behavior and don't get scared if your snails become less active in the winter months. There is anywhere between 100 to 500 eggs per egg clutch. However, there's a very high mortality rate for babies, which is a huge reason why apple snails reproduce so quickly and efficiently. So basically, Yes, a lot, a lot of babies hatch from those eggs, but also a lot of them die, which sounds a little bit sad, but really it's pretty much survival of the fittest overall for apple snails in general. That is two thumbs up for their development. The females deposit their eggs above the waterline, which is really why it's really, really, really important that you leave some air space on the top of your tank. You typically want to leave anywhere between two and three inches and if you're not so sure how much that is then leave anywhere between two and three finger lengths on the top of the tank with no water because even if you don't have any female apple snails to lay eggs, males also like to climb out of the water and just kind of chill and need it to breathe air from the surface. The eggs are always going to be laid above the water line and it's really really important that they don't touch the water. If they fall in the water or if they are partially laid under the water line, they will drown. The embryos will drown and the whole clutch will go bad. Eggs go through three stages. The first stage is right after they are laid they're soft and white and have like a milky colored mucus around them that typically only lasts for a few hours and then they enter the second stage which lasts about two to four weeks which is the egg development itself and what happens in those two to four weeks is the eggs will change colors they will go from that white colored with the mucus on it and they'll start to turn a pinkish orangey color depending on the species of apple snails that you own and then the eggs will develop for anywhere between two and four weeks depending on the temperature and humidity. The third stage is right before the eggs hatch they will dry out. What that means is they will turn a ashy color, kind of like when your skin's really dry and you really need some lotion. Within hours, the first baby snail will hatch and they'll just kind of crawl into the water and grow. Baby snails eat the same and they have the same requirements as the adults. So the only other thing that you might want to worry about is where you want them to grow out. I actually keep them in a nursery tank, so what I do is I actually take the egg clutch out 
of the main tank and then I incubate it for about two weeks and then after that they start hatching and they hatch right into the nursery. The most important, important thing and the best advice I'm going to give you today is by all means keep the lid in your tank. These little snails, they love to get out and just kind of roam around. If there's any little gap where they can squeeze out of, they will find it. If they get out and you don't find them in time to put them back in the water, they will dry out, they will dehydrate, and they will die. So yeah, keep the lid in your tank, it's the most important part. Even your filter, make sure you have your filter covered because my little guys love climbing up the filter and then climbing out. So what I had to do was, I cover it with duct tape nice easy fix another thing is their shell health some snails do have more problems than others it just depends on <laughs> and it mostly depends on their water quality some snails require calcium supplements to maintain a healthy shell so what you can do is you can provide calcium tabs liquid calcium calcium rich foods or you can buy a cuddle bone and just drop it in the water and you should do that if you start to see their shell eroding and what that means is their shells will get thinner or there'll be some broken pieces or just anything wrong with their shells you need to provide some calcium for them to build their shells again also if you have hard water then I really really recommend you use a water conditioner I myself don't use the water conditioner, but that's just what works for me. It might not work for you, so if you want to just play it safe, then I really suggest you use a water conditioner. And last but not least, how do you tell if your snail is dead? I've seen a lot of people freak out if they see their snail floating on top of the water. And let me just tell you. Snails do that. It's a normal behavior. It's not like with your fish. If you see your fish floating in the water, that typically means it's dead or dying. But however, that doesn't apply to apple snails. They actually do that quite often. But when your snail is dead, you will definitely know because you will get a funky smell when you open your tank. So I guess this wraps up the video and I really hope that you guys learned something. I'm going to leave a link to a website in the description so make sure you click on the description and it's a website so that you can interact with other snail owners, share your pictures, look at other snails pictures, ask questions. They also can help you identify your snail. You can upload a picture and someone will reply to you with the species. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching my video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I'm so cute, you should totally subscribe to my mommy. Oh my god, really?